This is Brandon Lee with BetFirms.com here with your 2012 Boston College football predictions. The Boston College Eagles have progressively gotten worse in each of Frank Spaziani's first three years as head coach. He has a combined 20-19 and record here, including a 4-8 and campaign in 2011. Spaziani has spent 16 seasons on the staff at Boston College, so he does have a little more breathing room than most coaches would in his position. With 17 starters and 40 lettermen returning, the Eagles have the kind of experience that could result in a big turnaround in 2012. However, Boston College was outgained by 101 and a half yards per game in ACC play last year, which was the worst mark in the conference. There's no question this team will be improved, but it's hard to see them making much noise in the Atlantic Division. The Eagles are coming off a woeful 2011 performance offensively. They put up just 18.2 points and 299 total yards per game, which was almost identical to their 2010 numbers. With 10 starters coming back, this unit figures to be one of the most improved in the ACC, though that's not saying a whole lot. Junior quarterback Chase Reddick hasn't been too productive in his first two years here, but he's likely to earn the starting job again this fall. Reddick completed 53.6% of his passes for 1,960 yards with 12 touchdowns and 9 interceptions last season. New offensive coordinator Doug Martin is one of the top quarterback mentors in the land, so maybe he'll be able to help Reddick make improvements. Boston College is in good hands at running back with its top two rushers back. Junior Landon Deuce Finch could become BC's next 1,000-yard rusher. Junior Andre Williams will certainly thieve his fair share of carries. The top four pass catchers from last season all return. They are senior Colin Larman, junior Bobby Swigert, senior Chris Pantel, and junior Alex Amiden. This experience at the receiver position should help Reddick improve as well. The offensive line paved the way for 131 rushing yards per game and 3.6 yards per carry, while also allowing a respectable 24 sacks a year ago. Four starters and eight of their top ten linemen return, so they should have an excellent chance at topping four yards per carry for the first time since 2003. Boston College has been known for having one of the best defenses in the country over the past decade. They slipped a little bit last year, allowing 23.5 points and 394 total yards per game. Seven starters return on this side of the ball, though they lose their best player and leading tackler. The defensive numbers should improve in 2010. The defensive line will be a strength as six of their top eight linemen are back, including five that have made at least five career starts. Senior defensive tackle Caleb Ramsey took a medical redshirt last season, giving him an extra year of eligibility. He has ten and a half sacks in his career, and the Eagles gladly welcome him back. You just can't replace a guy like Luke Keekley, who registered a ridiculous 532 tackles in three years for the Eagles. He led the nation in tackles last year before being taken in the first round by the Carolina Panthers. However, Boston College returns four of its top six linebackers, including junior strong side linebacker Steele DeVito and junior weak side linebacker Kevin Pierre-Lewis. Despite losing both corner Donnie Fletcher and free safety Hampton Hughes, the Eagles bring back seven defensive backs who started last year. They will still be a bit inexperienced here, though, as they are expected to start three sophomores alongside senior strong safety Jim Noel. Now for my ACC prediction, I have Boston College finishing in fifth place in the Atlantic Division. It's hard to ignore the experience that the Eagles have coming back, but I just don't believe there is a whole lot of talent on this roster. This team was outgained by over 100 yards per game in conference play last season, and even a big improvement on that number won't allow Boston College to contend in the Atlantic Division. Their ACC road schedule is a brutal one, with Florida State, Georgia Tech, and North Carolina State. And they also have to play both Clemson and Virginia Tech at home. The Eagles could win up to three conference games, but I am expecting them to get two by season's end, and finish only ahead of Wake Forest in the Atlantic.